Okay, and you have to know, if you're present, you guys, we're going to give away goodies today. So be present. We have some great things, okay? All right, um, our speaker today, I'm telling you, it's, he has a list of credits here, so I'm just going to cheat a little bit. Um, Dr. Michael Colgan, first of all, he is internationally renowned research scientist. He's acknowledged as one of the world's most scientific experts in nutrition, exercise, and the inhibition of aging. And I can tell you, we worked out with him yesterday, and at the tender young age of 75, he could outsmart all of us. And what he shows us is that with the example of living a powerful life, the science to maintain lean and vibrant health is very real. He has 50 years of research towards aging and working with that elite Olympic champion. He brings a unique understanding of environmental toxins and how do we combat them in today's world. He is an author. He has authored, as I said, many books. His training comes from the university, or he has trained at the University of Wellington and Auckland in New Zealand and Rockefeller University in New York City. He is director and president of the Colgan Institute from 1997 to 1998, both in the U.S. and Canada. And he's, his concern there was the, uh, finding the effects of the nutrition exercise for that athletic performance, aging, and prevention of degenerative disease. We are absolutely honored and thrilled that he is a member of the Isagenic Scientific Advisory Board. And if you have not tried the Brain Boost and the Sleep support system. He's fr first of all going to tell you why you need to. I will second that in that it, it changed my life. So will you please stand and welcome Dr. Michael Colvin to the stage. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, thank you. Um, I, I'm going to tell you a, a, a little bit about uh, my, my story. I'm not going to uh, use any slides. I'm going to tell you um, about 2010, I had, start, I had been working for Big Pharma for five years. And uh, I'd gone through a very, very difficult time with, a, with an accident where I became paraplegic for a year and a half and I had to recover from that. And at the end of 2010, I said to myself, do I want to reach the end? And when people ask me, what did you do? I say, I made a lot of money. <laughs> what a very, I would be very dissatisfied with that. So I wanted to try and spread the information as far as I could. And I have a, a, a thriving anti-aging business but it's very, very expensive for individual clients to come to me. And um, I can, therefore, I can only take a very few, and they're, they're usually wealthy people. In fact, I have two of the 71 registered billionaires in the world. Two of them are on my program. But the money doesn't matter to them, but to the average person, it does. And I would really like to come to the end of my career and if someone asked me the question, what did you do? I said, I, I, I would like to say I spread the science of health over millions of people. And so I was looking for an opportunity to, to do that. And I had, I do get offers from various companies. I had, um, recently I had an offer from the Virgin Company and uh, from Donald Trump and uh, from the uh, American Association for um, um, Anti-Aging Medicine, which is a big organization. But they didn't have, none of them had the, first of all, they didn't have the commitment personally to their own health. That was the key thing. So they, they were not walking, talking examples of what they knew. They may know stuff, but they, were not, they are not walking, talking examples. And that is important to me, because the, I have five criteria for working, and there's some that, some that you should consider, I believe. 
Well, the first one is the people. The people have got to be examples of what they know. If you're not an example of what you profess to know, then you don't know it. That's it. You don't know it. You think you do, but you have to be an example of what you know. Um, and that, that, so that, that, and the, the second part of the people criterion for me is I will only work with people with whom I would also spend leisure time with. If I can't see a group of people becoming my friends over a course of getting to know them, I don't want to work with them. I, and it's the same, I think, in isogenics business. If you go willy-nilly, siling up all sorts of people and you have no relationship with them, they are just going to drop like flies. They're going to drop off like flies. To, to, to run any business and to, to successfully work in your own life, I think you have to put a lot of cuddles in the bank and you have to get to know and form relationships with people. And the one thing I love about the Spokane uh, team is right there, Joni Brewer at the back. She puts lots of cuddles in the bank. And that's, that's a great thing. So that was my, my people criterion. And Isogenics, when I met Jim and Kathy Coover, um, they were so relaxed and down to earth and we chatted and we went out to lunch and they came back and Jim said, well, what, why, do, why wouldn't you, uh, would you like to be on our scientific advisory board? And I said, well, I know I'm only just come down and meet you. And, um, and so I took away the products and then, uh, it, uh, but, but that was my, my meeting with the people was, was very informative and I thought this is a group of people that I could get to ha have fun with and I have had fun with. So that was a great decision. Then my, then my second um, criterion is the products. Now I've designed a lot of products in my life, a lot of products for a lot of companies. And a lot of companies have no scientific backing whatsoever, a lot of nutritional companies. They don't have groups of scientists. They come to people like me as a consultant and say, design us a protein supplement, the best protein supplement you can design. And then I say, well, now, what are you interested in? And No, no, you design it. We'll take whatever you design. But it's got to be good and it's got to taste good. And I, am th I think to myself, this, this company <laughs> doesn't know what they're doing. They're, they're a me too company. They're out there garnering the marketplace, seeing what's What's, what's trending, and then going to what they think is one of the best companies and copying them and doing this sort of... So that's useless. It's really useless because there's no advancement of the science. So um, I had to see products that were original and that formed a system, a system that covered the basis for health. And isogenics was the closest thing put, that came to that and so that, that they fulfilled that criterion for me. And then the third one is, was the science. The science, they have to have in-house a group of scientists that I can talk science to, that know what I'm talking about, that know the latest papers. They have to have a scientific board that actually is argumentative and scientific and has strong opinions and big egos because that's the way science works. And a lot of companies don't have that. They have a board, um, and you'll see the names of these various signs. They never have meetings. They never contact each other. They're there for window dressing only. And lots of companies are like that. But, but I found that straight away that the uh, Isogenic Scientific Advisory Board met every month. And we argued like cats. <laughs> and the science got done and it was good, it was good. If I, if I put up a proposal for a product or an advancement in science and I meet no resistance, it's like empty, empty. Because I'm used to university where, where every Friday you got up and you said your piece and they tore you to pieces. And that was the way science should go. <laughs> because you can't know it all. You cannot solve a new problem in science with the skills 
that you brought to it. You have to learn new things. And it's very, very difficult. So um, when I found out, met Dr. Suk Cho and his team, and it also included David Despain. And David Despain is the, your um, chief of scientific communications in isogenics. And he was a child when I was um, lecturing for another company. And he came along to the, some of the meetings and he, he said to me, you inspired me to go to college and study nutrition. <laughs> so that was quite, quite good. And uh, I have to say this because it's, it's, it was on Facebook uh, a, a, a little while ago. He wrote to me, he said, you know you are my idol. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, when I have really, really lovely people like David in the company, I know there's something good going on. So, and so my science criterion was fulfilled. And then the, the next one was the compensation. Now I have designed products for several network marketing companies. And I, I am not a, an expert, and you're going to hear from experts on the on the compensation scheme, but I know when something is back loaded and when something's front loaded. I know a little bit about money. I might be a scientist, but I actually know a little bit about money. And I was astonished to find that the simple binary system that Isogenics was using was heavily front loaded in, in favor of the associates. And that's a very important thing because if you front load something, in other words, the people at the back end, the big people get less because there's only a certain amount to go around. But if you front load, that means people stick around because all the little people are actually earning money. They're not like some of the big network marketing companies out there where they don't, you, you work for them for a couple of years and you earn nothing. They say, yeah, well, in your third year, you might earn something. Something like that. You, you can earn immediately with, with isogenics. And, I, and Joni was talking and had people, uh, no, uh, um, um, we had people last night saying that they were able to take their children on holiday and that sort of thing. Well, I, when I joined, Jimmy Smith said to me, you should join your daughters up. He said, and I said, they're not interested. And he said, yeah, but join them up. So I joined my daughters up and I paid for their supplements and things and they didn't do anything. They thought it was all silly. And it, was, it, it made me almost tear up last night uh, when we were discussing these things because my daughter's just come back from three week holiday in Ireland, paid for by isogenics. And while she was away, she had more earnings than when she left. <laughs> so that's the sort of compensation I like. Now, it's taken her a while to get there, but she's, she's moving now. Um, and then the final thing, the final important thing to me in, in a company is the culture. The culture. What? It, it, it's, it's, it's great for, you know, you have your your corporate people individually great, and some of the leaders out in the field individually great, but they've got to also foster a culture of friendship and, and cooperation. And I had seen in other companies that teams were very separate, and they were very standoffish from each other, and they never gave out the you know, the new information. And you didn't help someone if they weren't on your team. And that was a sort of divisive culture that I have seen in, in some network marketing companies. It's not that they don't work, it's just that how do you want to spend your life? How do you want to spend your life? I want to spend my life in joy. In joy. And I can tell you that the the culture of friendship and cooperation that is fostered in isogenics is a rare thing. If you've been to other ma network marketing companies, you might know this if you've come lately to isogenics. It's a rare thing. And in the three years that I have been a member, 
of the Scientific Advisory Board, I've had more opportunities for the two greatest concepts of the human mind, love and laughter. So I'll say to you, everywhere you go, foster the culture of this remarkable company. So laugh easily and love deeply and kiss slowly <laughs> and forgive quickly. Forgive everything and everyone and play hard in isogenics. Give it everything you've got. Love with all your heart every day. Give with all your strength because that is life's purpose. That is how we approach the greater power that made us. Thank you. <laughs> I want you to know, first of all, before you get off stage, um, such wisdom, would you agree? And isn't that the wisdom in the words of life that really if we teach and we give to those and our children, what a great world it would be? And I want to just thank you so much because you have enhanced my experience with isogenics. I am so grateful to be able to say Dr. Michael Colkin is connected to our isogenics family and that the gift of bringing you to Spokane is truly a highlight for me and for our team as well. So Thank another you. round of applause. Thank <laughs> you so much. Thank you. Okay, so, did you, uh, I guess, Dr. Colgan, I, I guess maybe I'm going to put you back here. Does anybody have any questions that you would like to extend to Dr. Colgan? Okay, I want to open that up because I'm just taken with, first of all, cuddles in the bank back there, Miss Joni Burr. It is so true that if you extend yourself and that you give that friendship, those friendships will last a lifetime and certainly equate into business as well. So is there any questions that you'd like to Miss Joni back there? <laughs> Hello. I'll do that really professional stuff. Okay. Um, Dr. Colgan, I remember one time at dinner, uh, I, you had mentioned that you had your own shake. And uh, we talked about it, and I said, so why isogenics? And if you can remember, you know, what you brought up at that time, it was had something to do with John. Yes. Um, I, uh, I have designed uh, a, a fair few shapes. In fact, there's one on the market. It's been on the market for 20 years. It's been very, very successful for the company that made it. And when I came to Isogenics, John and I, John Anderson and I discussed the shape. And there were two little things that I could never get round in, in designing shapes. And I said, what about, and they were in the Isogenics segment. I said, John, what about these? And he said, I know, that's a difficult problem. And, and he said, but I'm working on it. It took him a year, and he, he changed the shape to produce the myoisoline complex. And that myoisoline complex, I can tell you, is the best complex out there. John Anderson is a genius at what he does. And it, we should be very thankful that he heads up the design team in isogenics. So I have a question, which is what the difference is between whey and casein and lactose, and why it is that the shakes say that they're lower in lactose? Right. Um, lactose is, is milk sugar. Lactose is not protein. La uh, people, a large number of people, especially if you are of European origin, which most Americans are, um, are lactose intolerant because of the time when, the, when they came out of Africa and the time that they developed, they, didn't, uh, they lost the tolerance for lactose. Um, casein is the main protein in milk. Casein is the cheapest to make, the cheapest to get out, 
and the most abundant in milk, so it's, it, it's the cheapest all around. But casein is slowly digested, and uh, for a lot of people, casein is not well digested because of that slow digestion process. When we first found whey protein concentrate, um, we didn't think it would work any better. And when it did, and when it was rapidly absorbed and, and digested, we looked very closely at the molecular structure of it, and it was much closer to human milk than uh, casein protein. And um, in fact, the, the people in New Zealand have worked in crossbreeding the cows to increase the lactobumin content of the whey protein to be even closer to human milk. And that's um, a, a superior, it's superior in terms of muscle accretion, in terms of um, preventing muscle wasting diseases. You know, as we get old, muscles waste, it's called sarcopenia, even if you do nothing, even if you exercise. So you need the best quality protein possible every day to stop that process. Because your muscles, people think, oh well, what muscle? A lot of, a lot of uh, young people that I talk to, I talk to young people groups, a lot of them don't, are not interested in muscle. They're not interested, and they don't understand that half the pumping power of your heart comes from the contraction of your muscles. If you lose your muscles, then the heart has a very big, much bigger burden of pumping to do. And half, half of the oxygen that gets to your brain comes from the pumping of your muscles. So if you lose your muscles, you lose oxygen to the brain. Sarcopenia is a very serious condition, and most older people suffer from it. So it's, um, it's a very important to have the best quality of protein. And I, I mean, we searched the world for everything, and we tried everything that you can think of. And you'll see, for instance, in bodybuilding magazines, you'll see people saying, oh, but whey protein isolate is much better than whey protein concentrate, because it's purer. Absolutely it is purer. By the, uh, if you have anything that's between 29% and 89% whey, then it is called a concentrate. From 90% to 95% whey is called an isolate. Beyond 95% is called singular amino acids. And we thought in the 1990s that if we could get the singular amino acids, we could make any combination we like. And the Japanese started to produce them, and everybody started to use them, and the results were very disappointing. And the results were disappointing because we didn't know at that time that the human gut has a special transport system for uh, amino acids joined together with sulfur bonds called dipeptides for two and tripeptides for three. It's a special transport system that only takes amino acids in those combinations. And by the time you get to 90% extraction for whey, all those solver bonds are broken, and then it becomes an isolate. And the isolate is much poorer absorbed than the concentrate. So that's why we use the concentrate. And there are a whole lot of things about it that, that um, we uh, even now, today, we're only just understanding the molecular structure of protein. And you have to think about this. Protein makes every single working unit in your body, every single one. There are no working units whatsoever that are not protein. All your enzymes are protein. Your genes are protein. Your hemoglobin is protein. All the rafters and beams of your, of your body are proteins. So your brain cells are all proteins. The very enzymes with I'm using to talk right now are being created second by second, and they're all proteins. 350,000 different proteins, and they're all made from the proteins that you eat. And if you eat incomplete or poor quality proteins, then you cannot avoid getting an incomplete and poor quality body. But we've only really in the last five years understood that, that it's critical. So I'm very pleased to have isogenics because 
their quality control and the amount that they spend in, in sourcing ingredients and, ki and, and then testing those ingredients and testing them with third party, it means that I don't have to look over my shoulder all the time when I'm giving these nutrients to people. I know the quality is there and that is not the case in a large part of the nutrition market because there is very little regulation. Anybody, anybody in this room could go and start a nutrition company tomorrow. And it was not hard to start a nutrition company and run it up to around about $300,000 a year. And there are a lot of companies out there that are like that. And they buy their ingredients off, off, the, off the, the trade market. That is a hopeless way to do it. Isogenics goes to the, to the producers, goes to the farms, buys futures in their ingredients to ensure that they're going to get the same thing year after year. When you buy on, when you buy on the market, like for instance all the fast food joints buy all their coffee on the market, it changes all the time. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's poor. They have no control over it. When Isogenics buys coffee, and they do, <laughs> they haven't got a coffee product. But yeah, exactly. They've got an e-shop. But, but, but they go to the farms, and they make a contract with the farmers, and they buy the futures. They contract for the futures so that they know if they produce something, they'll be able to produce it consistently year after year. And therefore, I don't have to look over my shoulder uh, about the products when I'm, when I'm recommending them for people. And that's very important. So. Lovely. Um, I remember a statement, Dr. Colgan, that you made. What you put in your body today, how long does it hang around oh. in your body? And why sometimes is it better to not put anything in your body? Well, of course, it, it's, it's better not to, if you... People say, oh, well, you know, I, I, I was flying and it was a five-hour flight and I had to eat that stuff at the airport and it was really bad. It was a, a chili dog or something. They don't realize that that chili dog then it turns into proteins in their body and they, they're, they're made, poor quality proteins are made in your body out of that chili dog and those proteins last up to six months. If they're muscle cell proteins, you're stuck with them. You cannot get rid of them. And yet they are going to operate your muscles in an inferior way. So it's much better to eat nothing at all. Leave your body to its own resources. Perfect. Okay. Any more? One more question. Jolene. Uh, I um, have become familiar recently with a genetic mutation called MTHFR. Are you familiar with that? Yes. And the folic acid that's in Isogenics products, to those people, is scary because they can't break it right. down in their body. Right. Is there any conversations going on at Isogenics to take the folic acid out, or why do we even have it in there? Well, the folic acid, uh, for most people, folic acid will work. For a, a majority of people, it will work. It doesn't work as well as tetrahydrofolate. Um, but tetrahydrofolate is about five times the cost. So every time you say, okay, we're going to take an ingredient out and change it for a, what is a minority of people that cannot actually absorb and use folic acid, um, you have to think everybody else then has to bear this higher cost. So there's lots of things involved. I personally would use tetrahydrofolate, and I do use it myself personally even though I haven't been tested for that <laughs> genetic difference, but I think it's a better thing. But folic acid is certainly um, reasonable uh, for a lot of people. Perfect, okay, thank you so much. Um, another round of applause for Dr. <laughs> Michael Colvin, thank you.